Hey guys, Jarek here and welcome to Ember Skip. And as always, today I will be working on a piece of ember, but I had a little bit of a problem. I couldn't pick a piece myself, because there is too much to choose from, and for that reason I will need uh, help from a... The cute girl, <laughs> and she will help me to pick the piece. So let's go and check everything out. Picking a piece on which I want to work next is always the biggest hassle for me. And at this moment I don't know myself which one will I get, so it's quite intriguing. Okay, we can turn the light on, it will help you to see inclusions better if there's any. And so in the big box, all of this stuff is probably without inclusions, that's just the sea amber. And the ones in here, guaranteed inclusions. So your task will be to pick one of any of these and yeah, to give it to me so I will work on it. Okay, great. I can start? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I hope it won't take you too long. And turns out picking a piece to work on is not so simple for her as well. She was attracted to the pieces with guaranteed inclusions and it took her a while to decide which piece is the piece. And I don't blame her. As I mentioned before, I always get into the same trap where I want to work on the every single piece that's in the bowl. And so, did you make up your mind? Yes. This one? Why this one? Uh, because I think there will be something special. Yeah. Maybe a wasp? In raw state it's still hard to say what is the insect inside, but it certainly looks like a flying one. Not a bad looking piece of amber. Let's see what can I make out of it. I will be using Dremel rotatory tool with 220 grit bit attached to it. That's the only piece of equipment I own, but that's also the only tool I need right now to get work done. From the top inclusion looks deep enough so I can relax a bit and remove the surface freely. Yeah, the, this flying insects insect looks quite deep inside, closer from this side. That means I can be quite brave from here and remove this ugly layer completely. And the oxidation from the top. Yeah, so let's do that really quick. That should be done. I can't even see from this side, but I will have also to make it a little bit more flatter because if not, then it will be problematic to make pictures next. Okay, so now this side and this top corner I will leave for the last because in this last layer is the insect which can you know, get destroyed if it pops off. So extremely careful for this side. It happened exactly what I was afraid of. It did pop off. Okay, let's check it out. Yeah, the place is very unfortunate, but I think the insect is alright. All it looks whole from the inside, so it wasn't in this layer. It is a little bit above it, tiny bit, so <laughs> there's a glimpse of hope to save it. Yeah, but I think I won't be so reckless anymore. I will take 600 grit and will go slowly with this place. But before that, let's finish the corners. Maybe let's make it Let's rem remove this arc. I don't like this arc. Okay. Yeah, 
Yeah, so the station is a little bit tricky. By tricky, I mean it's very dangerous. So now I need 600 grit to be a little bit more careful because I was reckless at first. Yeah, I have 600 right here. Change it up and proceed carefully. <laughs> the keyboard is carefully. Okay, so 600 grit is done. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this was so close. Look at this. This was way too close to comfort to go that far. It, it's almost sticking out. Yeah, for sure. Now we go just pre polish with the sandpaper. <laughs> That's crazy. I almost destroyed it. And so, because the piece is quite small, it took me a little bit shorter time to, you know, the, the Dremel, the full thing, and now we are at the pre-polishing stage. I have some scraps of sandpaper here, which will do the final pre-polish, after which we will polish, so let's not waste any time and finish this piece up to see if there is a wasp or anything else. Sometimes, after pre-polishing the piece, I forget why do I even need to polish it. It, le it looks so clear already and then it dries out and I start to remember why the polishing is needed. So let's polish it and that will be it. Next step will be making some pictures. Currently, piece is pre-polished up to 2500 grit of sandpaper, so that's glass-like smooth. But without actual polishing it still looks opaque, but not for long. After quick polishing with scratch remover on the fiber cloth it will start glowing. Next wipe off dry polishing paste and voila, we are ready to take some pictures of an inclusion that was hidden for millions of years. So first of all, kudos for Curly Lady for picking this piece. She was right on it being special. It turned out wonderfully, the inclusion is very well visible. The prep was a bit complicated because of that layer from the backside that popped off and I thought that it did damage the insect. Luckily that's not the case and it's half millimeter inside of amber from the backside. And yes, it is indeed a wasp, tiny wasp, so good eye Curly Lady. Experts from Hymenopterist group confirmed that's a wasp from Drininae family. These wasps measure from less than a millimeter to 5 millimeters in body length. The one we have in amber measures around 2.5 millimeters. This is a male wasp because females in this species are wingless and resemble worker ants. So it's a wonderful ancient 44 million years old male wasp we have in our hands now, which is fantastic. So yeah guys, that's it for the video, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more ember and fossil content and see you next time, bye!